All right. Hello, mathletes. Welcome to math class. Uh, don't know how far you are into class right now. Guessing that you've probably finished your three-minute review. Um, if not, why don't you pause the video, keep the screen up, pause the video, and uh, get that question in and hand it in to, to Miss McBride or to Miss Birkeland. Okay, so first of all, the most important thing is to, uh, if we look at what we're up to today, we need to acknowledge the hump and celebrate the hump. And then um, we do have some partner work, which I'm going to explain a little bit before you get going on it because, um, because it's, uh, it's a little bit of an extension of what we did in class yesterday. So you'll have to use your partners and Miss Birkeland and Miss McBride to help you sort through the problem of it. And I want you to work on that till 9.30 at the latest, okay? And then you're going to start your note. Um, I didn't put in skills, see that? Maybe if there's time, Ms. McBride can make one up for you or Ms. Brooklyn can make one up for you, but I think that it'll take a little bit of while to get through the lesson today. Okay, so can you please pause the video? And Ms. McBride, um, if you could take the computer over to YouTube and look up the Hump Day commercial to show the kids, because that's what we do on Wednesdays. We celebrate the hump. Okay, pause. And I guess you're back and you've now celebrated the hump. Okay, let's talk about the partner work today. I'm going to show you what the first sheet looks like. This is our note. We'll get back to that. Show you what the first sheet looks like. And what this is, okay, and there's this page and then there's a second page here. And so it's what each one is, is actually doing the rate of change, the rise over run that we talked about yesterday doing it for different sections of a line, which is a bit different for sure. So if you think you need help, I know that, that your teachers today can help you. But I'll show you what I mean on this one. This is the first page of it. And you can see you're going to um, make a triangle where your rise will be right there. Do you see where my cursor is? So the rise would be how high that is, which is, if you read there, it's 200. And the run will be 5. That would be just like what we did yesterday. What will be more challenging is between B and C. Because there you got to do, the run is going to go, do you follow my, follow my cursor along the bottom, there will be the run, then the rise will be right there. And, and then that will allow you to figure out the rate of change between B and C. So get some help, but try it. D and E is an interesting one. Maybe you can make a guess right away what the, what the slope or the rate of change for D to E will be. Anyways, so you're going to do that, and you're going to calculate the rate of change for each section of the graph. Um, I only want you to work till 9.30 today, so if this is as far as you get, that's okay. Then you can hand it in with that just that completed. If you find you get done and you have lots of time, then please go to the back and do this one as well, okay? But the main goal and what you need to have done by 9.30 today is the rate of change for each one of these sections, okay? And this one's interesting too because it goes down, but uh, we did look at something like that yesterday. Okay, so... I could pause. You should pause the video now and get on with your uh, partner work and then turn it on again at 9.30, ready to do today's lesson. Okay, here we go. Uh, here should be, this is the note you should have on today. You have to be open to um, other rates of change. We're going to, you have this graph in front of you and don't start writing too quickly. But from the graph, we have to read the data to fill in um, the table and the table will have mass which is this number here goes here and we're going to read off these points so for and then how the dose this is like medicine for dogs so it's like how many milligrams mg is milligrams so a little like how much tiny bit of how much dose of medicine we give to the dogs based on how big they are so if they're a three kilogram dog you would give them looks like 39 okay Okay, so you can start to fill in this table. So we're saying for mass from 1 to 6, so these are only little dogs, mass 1 to 6 kilograms. And these numbers here are just read directly off. So um, for 4, you come up, right? And I want to find, it's 47, but how I'm getting that is from 4, I go straight up to that point, and I read across to get 47. And you should be able to do that right now. That shouldn't be too hard for you. Okay, why don't you, on your own, calculate, pause the tape, and uh, calculate the first differences, figure out the first differences. That's what we did yet, uh, two days ago. So pause it now and make sure that you guys get the same thing I get. Pause. And we're back. And hopefully you got a first difference of eight every time. Okay. 
So that's just the first part. The rise and run here re reflects the next question. So we recorded the data from the graph on the table, and we did masses up to six. They included the first differences. So that's what we're done. Uh, part B says select two points on the graph and determine the rate of change. What does the rate of change represent? So I chose these two points here. So here's my little right angle triangle. And it's really important. It's like I know, I know that as I do this, some of you will be not quite sure where these numbers are coming from. But let's look at it closely. If you follow my cursor, the run is pretty easy because the run starts here at 1. So the run is how far it moves across. And it ends here at 2. So from 1 to 2 is a step of 1, right? Now on the, on the rise part, it's starting at 23. That's where my cursor is going across here. That's 23. And it ends up here at 31. So as you go from 23 to 31, you're going up from 23 to 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. You're going up by 8. So that's where the 8 comes from. It's how many steps above, I, how many steps up I go from 23 to 31. So when I fill in for my rise and run, I say my rise is 8, and it's in milligrams as the unit, divide, and then divided by run, so divided by the run, which is 1. And so you end up with 8 milligrams per kilogram. And I guess that's an important thing. When we're talking about rates of changes, they usually have a unit. It's always something per something. Kind of like it's actually what they are. If you remember back to doing unit rate when we did ratios and proportions, it's kind of the same thing. This is the unit rate, 8 milligrams per kilogram. Okay? So it represents the amount of medicine for, per kilogram of dog. So if you had a 20 kilogram dog, if we assume this relationship continues, you could say 20 kilograms, if 8 milligrams is for 1 ki kilogram dog, you could say for a 20 kilogram dog, you just multiply by 20. And then, yeah, you'll notice that the first difference is equal in this case to the rate of change. And that's true if, this if is important, the value on the left of the table, that's this one here, if this is going up by ones, your rate of change will end up being your first differences. They're the same thing. But that's not always the case. Now, if I start to go through too fast, Ms. McBride will pause the, pause the tape for you, okay? All right, that's her. I don't know. Here we go. Okay, so let's look at this one. Uh, the table and graph show the cost of a child's birthday party. Determine the rate of change and differences. So first differences. What does the rate of change represent? So first of all, I did first differences, and I said, how much does it go up by every time? And so every jump goes up by 14, 29 to 43. If you work that out, that's going up by 14. So every time it's going up by 14. Now you might be tempted to say, based on what I told you last time, that the rate of, that means the rate of change must be 14. But if you come back to over here, it doesn't work because this is going up by 2s, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So it's basically going up by $14 every time you add two children. So the rate of change is how much it would go up for one child. And that's really how it ends up with $7 per kid. But the way you would get that from the graph, because here's our graph, and it gave us the triangle and everything filled in. So I just added a little bit of information. So the run is pretty easy because it starts here at 4 right on this triangle here, and it ends at 10. So that means it's going across by 6, right? That's how much it's moving over, so that's the run. The rise is a bit more difficult, but the rise, if you look off of here, it's starting at 43, and it goes up to 85, and that's just if I read across, follow my cursor, and I read across right to there, it'd be 85. So that means it's going up by from 43 to 85, it's going up by 42, okay? So my rise is 42, my run is 6. So when I do rise over run, I go 42 divided by 6, and that's 7. And I say $7 per kid because I have $7 is the rise, and then the run is number of children or number of kids. So the rate of change represents the cost per kid at the party because this is a birthday party. So we said here, with first differences, it was telling us it's $14, but that's for two kids because it was jumping up by two every time. Okay. All right. I think this is the last page. Yeah, because it's got the negative one. Okay, this one is looking at fuel efficiency. So it's saying, here's a graph for a small car, and it's saying, if it drives this many kilometers, how much gas does it use, fuel or gas, does it use in liters? Okay? Turns out it's a linear relationship. 
And so it says to determine the rate of change. So again, you could choose a triangle wherever you want. So if you did this question without me, you might have chosen a triangle right here where my cursor is or right here. You could choose it wherever you want. I always try to pick ones that fall on nice numbers. So I chose this point. See how it passes right on the cross there? So I know it's not going to be like, it'll be easy to read off the graph accurately. That's why I chose that point. But you could have chosen something else. So anyways, choosing that point though gave me, it goes over by four from zero to four. So that's a step. It's going one, two, three, four steps that way. And then up, it's starting at zero and it goes all the way up to 60. So that's my rise. So then when you do the rate of change, it's rise over run, so 15. Again, where do the units come from? So that rise, is it's going up by, what it goes up by is measured in kilometers. So that's always going to be like 60, it's really 60 kilometers divided by 4 liters. But instead of putting the units there, I just stick it at the end. And so that represents how far you can go on 1 liter of gas. So all you had left is in your tank is one liter. How far would you get? Get to about Wildwood. So say your car only had 30 liters, how far could you go? And the idea here, by multiplying, it's because I'm saying if you could go 15 kilometers on one liter, then if you were going 30 liters, you'd go, you'd have to multiply 15 by 30, and then you go 4 or 50 kilometers. Okay, again, pause it if I'm going too fast, but let's go to the last example. <coughs> tell I'm still a little bit sick. Okay, this one's interesting. See, I love this question because now I love all the questions, but I love this one because it's going down. So that makes it different. So let's talk about, you know, what that means. It doesn't change a whole lot in how we approach it, but I, I, I really do find kids struggle when it's a negative slope, and that's what this means. It's, it's going down. So when we talk about negative trends, this is a negative trend. Right? And a negative trend means the rate of change is negative. So initial height, so you would just read that right here, right? Initial height because time is zero. So that means initial. So when time is zero, that's the beginning. So the first point we can see on our graph is 250, so that's the initial height. So we've got some hot air balloon that's starting at 250 meters and high, and it just slowly started drifting towards the ground. And the question is how fast is it drifting? It's dropping. So the rate of change, so my triangle here, I did the whole piece. And so it goes from 250, and here's the bottom. When I figure out my rise, this must be 200 right here, because that's 190, and that's 210, so you must have 200 here. So it's going from 250 down to 50. So it's negative 50 meters. Okay, so and, and, and the short answer, if you're confused about the negatives, is if the graph looks like this, if the graph looks like this, it's going to be a negative slope, a negative rate of change. If it looks like that, it's going to be positive. That's a positive trend. Positive trend has a positive slope. A negative trend has a negative slope or rate of change, whatever term you want. Okay, and the run here is it starts at 0 and it ends at right here, 5. So the run is 5. So the rise divided by the run is negative 50 divided by 4. And the negative, if you're dividing a negative by positive, it just ends up being negative. You don't need to worry about that too much. You can stick it in your calculator. It would all work out. But what this tells me is it's dropping 12.5 meters every minute. Okay? So that's what the rate of change means, is every minute it's it, the balloon is dropping by 12.5 meters. Okay, that's the lesson. Um, I definitely want you to do your exit card up for sure. And uh, once you're done that, uh, if there's a lot of time left, I doubt there is. If there's a lot of time left, you should do some skills. If there's not, maybe maybe Miss McBride or Miss Brooklyn can do it on the blackboard. Might be fun for a change. Uh, if there is not much time, then it's only a couple of minutes. Maybe you could do. Uh, if you have everything done and you hand in your three your exit card, you can put the fail army on. But I will definitely be back on Thursday, and uh, have a great hump day. Bye bye. I turn this off.